Have you ever spent time outdoors and watched a specific area over time? Maybe it's the creek in the park by where you live, or the field you play in at school. Do these places always stay the same? While it may look like these outdoor spaces don't change much, when we start to pay attention, we might actually notice that they are always changing. Sometimes the changes are so tiny you don't notice them, but other times big changes come along and they make a big difference. One habitat in Nebraska that goes through lots of changes is a wetland. Sometimes they are flooded, while other times they are dry and the soil is cracked. Imagine if you lived in this type of habitat. How would you survive all of these changes to your home? Many incredible Nebraska animals spend almost all their lives in wetlands and have come up with creative adaptations to help them survive there. For some, it's physical things on their body like a beaver's teeth for chewing through tough plants. For others, it's the way they act like sandhill cranes migrating through Nebraska's wetlands in search of food and rest. The way an animal behaves in order to survive can look different depending on the animal. Some animals, known as ecosystem engineers, can even take that behavioral adaptation to the extreme. This means that they can build or create something that helps them survive in wetlands, even when their environment changes. What does some of this engineering look like? Can you think of an animal who builds or engineers things in nature to meet their needs? From nests and dens to dams, webs, and casings, there are a lot of engineering activities going on in wetlands, so let's dive right in. First up, let's take a look at nests. Have you ever seen a nest built by a bird? Oftentimes we think of them nestled high in a tree, and sometimes they are. But did you know that some birds build them right on the ground or at the edge of the water? Take the trumpeter swan. These large birds like to build their nest on a low site completely surrounded by water. Usually they will use an old muskrat or beaver den as the platform they build upon adding vegetation to create a mound that can reach up to 11 feet across and 3 feet off the ground. Talk about engineering! The female will build around herself to create the bowl she and the eggs will rest in. While being surrounded by water can be challenging due to flooding, the swan will rebuild if necessary. Another engineer that builds its nest high above a wetland in the trees is the great blue heron. The male gathers sticks and brings them to the female, who then weaves a platform into the branches. These nests can withstand high winds and are usually built in groups called a rookery. At all levels, birds are building amazing structures in wetlands that can withstand the elements. But are all nests built by birds? There's another type of nest that we don't usually think of, and that's because it's built underwater. Fish like the bluegill are expert nest builders, and in this case, the males do all the work. Using their tail, males will sweep away sand or rocks in shallow water, leaving a circular depression that they hang out in until they attract a female. Bluegill will actually build their nests in large colonies. Once a female lays her eggs, the males guard them from all passing creatures. Building this space might seem simple, but it's extremely important in allowing the bluegill to raise their young and keep them safe from predators. Those were some pretty neat nests built to withstand all the types of changes happening in wetlands. But what other types of structures do animals make in wetlands? Let's take a look at lodges and dens. This next animal engineer is well known for its ability to actually cause the changes we often see in wetlands. Beavers. They are skilled at building dams that slow flowing water and create flooded areas. This gives them easier access to their food, which are plants like willow and cottonwood trees. They also build homes called lodges out of branches and sticks. They can enter and exit their lodge through tunnels they have made under the water surface. These are safe spaces that provide them shelter through all types of weather. Even when a storm comes through, these resourceful engineers patch things up and continue their work in the wetland, building dams and stopping up water. Another animal not quite as big as a beaver, but still a natural builder, is the muskrat. 
This rodent digs den systems underground on the edges of wetlands and builds a lodge too. Instead of sticks, muskrat lodges are made of smaller plants like cattail stalks. Because wetlands tend to be more open and flat, these muskrat houses are perfect spots for other animals to get a good vantage point of their surroundings. Yet another den-building mammal is the North American river otter. This playful predator hunts underwater for its favorite snack, fish. The otter makes its home in dens on riverbanks and wetland edges. Sometimes the entrance to their den can even be accessed from underwater. They'll even take advantage of abandoned burrows left behind by other animals. One last unexpected excavator is the Salt Creek Tiger Beetle. This insect is one of the rarest in the world, and it can be found only in Nebraska's saline wetlands near the capital city of Lincoln. This engineer spends two years of its life as a larva burrowed underground. Towards the end of this time, it becomes a pupa, like a cocoon, and finally emerges as an adult. This is called complete metamorphosis, just like a butterfly life cycle, but underground. The saline wetlands that this insect depends on have changed a lot, and many of them no longer exist. This sort of change is a challenge that many species face, and without positive conservation actions from people, they may not be able to adapt fast enough to survive. Thankfully, dedicated people called conservationists are working every day to protect this Nebraska species and its habitat. For our last engineered masterpieces, we're taking a look at webs and cases. Although the defenseless caddisfly larva is not much to look at, it bravely faces predators every day. It grows in small streams and wetlands, and it's the favorite snack of many fish species and even other aquatic insects. To help it survive, this incredible insect uses the natural materials found in its habitat to build a case around its fragile, worm-like body. Because it is built out of natural items, the caddisfly larva camouflages, blending in with its wetland surroundings. This is pretty amazing engineering to survive in its environment. Last up, we have the long-jawed orb weaver. We can't talk about engineers without talking about spiders. This arachnid is fondly called the stretch spider because it likes to sit with two pairs of legs stretched out in front and two behind while resting. This spider can be found along the edges of wetlands and will spin an orb or circular shaped web to catch small insects with wings. This spider silk is very strong and can often be seen when dew collects on it in the early morning. Just another ingenious way that animals are engineering in wetlands in order to survive all that their environment throws their way. Wow, those were some incredible acts of engineering and we barely scratched the surface. I wonder, do any of these animal-engineered works sound familiar? Have humans implemented any of these types of engineering for our own purposes? What can we as humans learn from these wetland engineers? Next time you're spending time in nature, and especially if you find yourself near a wonderful wetland, look for these amazing animal engineers and the structures they have built. Animals all around us may look and act very differently than us humans, but they're still capable of creating incredible homes, structures, and other useful features that support their survival in Nebraska's ever-changing wetlands. Get out there and see it for yourself.